Today I am going to show you the exercises that you need to do to help you get back on the ice as soon as possible after a groin strain without ending up looking like this your first game back. It looks like he's grabbing his groin there, Rick. Welcome back to Goalie Training Pro TV. This is video two in a three part series because you guys asked for it on what to do after you've strained your groin. So in part one, if you missed it, I covered what to do in that initial one to seven days after an injury. So if you haven't watched that, make sure you watch it next. This video is all about the advanced rehab uh, exercises that are gonna help you to get back onto the ice. Next week in part three, I'm gonna give you the exercises you need to incorporate into your regular off ice training to prevent a recurrence on an ongoing basis, or if you're like one of those people who's like, I've never strained my groin, do these exercises to help keep that going and reduce your risk of re-injury. Uh, so if you haven't hit the subscribe button, you probably want to do that now. If you've subscribed, hit the bell, and then you'll know about the new videos as they come out before everyone else, so that's pretty nice. If we haven't met before, my name's Maria Mountain. I'm an exercise physiologist. I specialize in off-ice training for goalies. So what that means is I basically help average goalies go to confident and consistent by giving you the right training programs to do off the ice. Okay, if you haven't done all the steps in video one, go back and do all the steps from video one. If you have done all the steps from video one and it's not really getting any better or it's even getting worse, go see a physio. And why do I say go see a physio rather than go see your doctor? That is a very good question. Thank you for asking. That's a good one. Uh, this is why. A lot of doctors, um, like if you go to see your family doctor, think of all the stuff they have to learn in medical school. They have to learn, is this a cold? Is this a thing? Is it a tumor? Is it, you know, they know all these things and they're called a general practitioner for a reason. They have a really broad, broad set of tools. This is a little more of a specialized problem. So really, you know, they're like, okay, yeah, you've got a pain there. Take some rest, take some anti-inflammatories and it'll probably feel better. And it actually probably will feel better because almost anything feels better when you rest it and take anti-inflammatories. The problem is it doesn't really solve the problem for you and it doesn't set you up for a successful return to the ice. So not knocking doctors whatsoever, but a lot of them don't have the skills. And if you go to an orthopedic surgeon or something like that, I, like I get that too. Like I saw, I saw an orthopedic surgeon. They also don't really have the assessment skills. What are my skills? Their job is to do surgery. <laughs> and uh, you know, so some of them have pretty good assessment skills, but a good sport physical therapist will have seen, you know, 20 of these this week. And, and so, you know, they really know how to assess what's going on, what muscles are involved, that kind of thing. So that's why I say go see a good sport physical therapist. If you have a sport med doc or a chiro who like takes amazing, it's like, no, like they're the best and they know everything. Great. Then go see them, go see your team member. But if you're just like, Hmm, I'm not sure where to go find a good sport physical therapist. So let's assume you've done all the steps in video number one and it's actually feeling a lot better. Your pain, you like hardly have any, you don't have any pain. Maybe you sort of feel it, some activities of daily living, you feel it a little bit if there's a stretch, but it's nothing that you would deem uncomfortable. It's perfect, we're good to go. What we're gonna move on to next is some gentle dynamic strengthening. Let me show you what I mean. So you're gonna get the lightest resistance band that you have, and mine has like little ankle attachments. You don't need ankle attachments, you can just tie a loop in one end, that works fine. But you're gonna attach that to your ankle, on the same side as the strain. So if it, this is my left leg where I did the strain, that's the leg that I'm gonna put it on. We aren't at the stage where we're trying to really seriously strengthen the muscle. We're just trying to get those muscles working again. So I'm going to do 10 repetitions, five where I bring my heel to my toe, and five where I bring my toe to my heel because the adductors is a big group of muscles, and so depending on the position of my leg, I'm going to be using different muscles. So I want to make sure that I'm getting everything under a bit of tension. And there's a little pause at the top, 
Make sure I keep this knee poker straight. Don't let it bend. And keep those toes pointing straight ahead. Sometimes people will want to turn their foot out or, you know, do funny things. And it's partly because you're trying to avoid using those adductors. So toes straight ahead, knee nice and straight. Ten repetitions. And it'll be five to the front and five to the back. I think it's not a bad idea to then go and do the other leg as well because then it's going to get some of that isometric work and stabilization work. So I would do the side that was affected first and then I would swap around and do the unaffected side. Talking about stabilization and balance, this is another nice one to work on that but also to put those muscles on a bit of a stretch in all different planes of motion. Just kind of like we did when we did that static stretch in video number one, you know, we did the half groin with the rotations. It's sort of a similar idea, but this is add a lot more challenge. So it's going to be a three way reach and then we'll just pause for a couple seconds when we're out there. So three way reach balancing on one foot. So I'm going to reach way out over my pinky toe. I'll hold for about two seconds, come back up. Then I'm going to reach straight out over my middle toe, hold for a couple seconds, come back up. Then I'm going to reach out over my big toe, hold for a couple seconds, and come back up. And I would do two to three in each position. Then we're going to get into a, more of a movement from like a butterfly type position. We're going to do a half kneeling reverse crease push. Again, very light resistance, so not much tension. This is the lightest band I have. My toe is just on like a little glider disc. You don't need this. You can just put your foot in a, in a bag, like a plastic bag if you're on carpet. If you're on a smooth floor surface, then you know, just have your sock on the floor. That works fine. But I want to stay up nice and tall. So this one also I'm going to do on both sides. But let's just say... This is my injured side, so I'm going to just gently pull up and in, and I want to make sure that I'm getting that knee right in line with my hip at the top, so I don't want to just kind of stay out here in this range. And then I'm going to reach out with that leg, bring it back in, but I'm controlling it the whole time. I'm not trying to go game speed. I'm just going to make sure that it feels okay. One of the things, you know, as we wade in, and maybe I'm doing that, I'm like, this feels fine. I have no pain, it feels perfect, so I'm going to try going faster. The problem with muscle strains, sometimes it actually feels okay while you're doing it, but then you wake up the next day, probably some of you have had this experience, you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, I way overdid it, wow, now I feel like I've been set back three days, I did too much. So we just start with the basic, and then we give ourselves a day. Okay, how did I feel the next morning? Uh, I felt pretty good, maybe a little bit stiff. Okay, once I got up and moving around for an hour or so, did that stiffness go away and did it not come back for the rest of the day? Yeah, it did. Okay, then we're probably all right to progress. If it's like, no, the stiffness didn't go away or it went away a bit, but then anytime I sat down and got up again, it was really stiff, that signals like, hey, okay, we better just stay at that level for another day or so, let the body get used to it. And let's say I did one of these exercises and got pain. You know, I, I was like, oh, like, ouch, you know, or that's, that's more than just my normal base level. That's a signal that, okay, you know what, I need, this is too advanced for me right now. I need to just stay at the level or go back to the level I was at. Again, you give it a couple more days and see how it feels. So the key is moving it, not moving it too much, putting it under tension, not giving it too much tension. You don't want to just rest, like we talked about a little bit earlier. Almost anything feels better with rest, but it doesn't help the tissue remodel. It doesn't help your brain and your muscles learn, okay, actually this is okay, yeah, I'm feeling better. After an acute injury, the response of the brain, it kind of wants to turn off those muscles because it's trying to protect you. And so it's sending a signal like, no, 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 don't do that. You know, if we can over time show it, yes, this actually feels fine, actually feels good, it's helping that tissue heal, then our brain relaxes a little. What happens when goalies just rest and then think, well, yeah, it feels better, and they go back out on the ice, you actually risk injuring yourself more and 
worse. So make sure you're doing something. It's like the Goldilocks principle. Not too much, not too little, just right. Probably some of you have had the experience of getting back on the ice too soon or, you know, just going out to test it and then you end up hurting yourself more. Drop a comment below because it's really helpful for other goalies too. I can say it, but when you guys share your experiences, other goalies see that and think, okay, yeah, yeah, I better not do that. At this stage, you've done some gentle dynamic strengthening. It's felt fine. It hasn't increased your discomfort at all. So now we're going to take it up a notch with a squat lateral. So we're gonna start you know, lengthening that tissue under a little bit more tension. Start with about a double hip width, triple hip width stance, not super wide, but we're going to keep this knee straight so the outstretched knee stays straight. Let's say again, let's say this is my injured side. Keep that knee straight, I'll sit back with my bum a little bit as I squat laterally to the side. So this is coming under tension. I'll pop back up, then I'll go to the other side. So now this leg has to work a little bit to generate the movement. And we'll go about three seconds down, a little pause at the bottom, come up for about a count of one, and you're gonna do six to eight to each side. We're also gonna start to work on a few just simple kind of on ice goalie patterns, but at a nice slow speed. So almost just stepping through. So imagine that, you know, if you're on the post, you're gonna push up to the top of the crease. You're gonna push back down to your other post. You're gonna come up, be set, back to the post, be set. So it's not at speed at all, We're really just kind of stepping, making those more dynamic movements, testing the water, see how it feels. Wanna get that hip stability back so when there's pain or swelling in an area of the body sometimes it isn't working as well as it should so we want to make sure that we get that that sense of stability back so i'll work on single knee balance make sure you have something cushiony to to put your knee on but yeah just in a half kneeling position lifting up that front foot finding your balance now if it's a little too crazy or this isn't an exercise that you regularly do definitely have something just to lightly hold on to, to help because again, what you don't want to happen is be going fine and then be like, whoa, you know, and, and then have a really jarring motion and hurt yourself. That was pretty good, wasn't it? It was very dramatic, I know. <sighs> yep. Also add some more eccentric loads. So we're gonna go half groin eccentrics. I'm not gonna go my full range of motion. I might go with sort of a third to a half to start with. So I'm going to lower, 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 but then just use my hands to come back up. Lower, 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 use my hands to come back up. And you can pay attention to how you feel, but don't go to a point where you feel like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a good stretch. That actually will be too much. But you can go until you feel, oh yeah, I feel a stretch in that area, I just feel it on set. Okay, now I'm gonna use my hands to come back up. So that's just eccentric lengthening or eccentric contraction. You're gonna go down for about four seconds and you'll do six to eight. Um, on, and not a bad idea to do it on both legs. And since we're down here, when we were standing, we worked on just some of our standing movement patterns. We're gonna work on just some of our recovery patterns from our butterfly. No power, no speed, that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to see, hey, how does that feel? So we might just come around, boom, stand up, step, establish, come back down. Okay, follow the play, boom, around, how does that feel? The emphasis here <laughs> is there can't be any pain. So if there's sort of like, I have this normal tightness or discomfort, it's okay if you feel that, but if you feel anything above that, it tells you, hey, I'm, I'm doing a little bit too much. And we can't, as much as we want to, we can't accelerate our healing. We can't make our body heal faster. All we can do is provide an optimal environment for it to heal as fast as it can. And if we keep sort of testing it out or, you know, being too aggressive, all we're doing is setting it back and making it harder for the body to repair and recover. 
as things like the standing patterns, the knee recovery to the step, the reverse crease push, as those get feeling just better and better, no issue whatsoever, no pain, no nothing, then you can start increasing the intensity a little bit. Start gradually ramping up the speed just to help your body get accustomed now to like, okay, well now it's a fast, faster contraction. But you will still need to get on the ice with your pads on just to go through some simple movement patterns, ideally on your own or a time when you can just practice what, what you need to practice, not in a practice situation, not in a game situation, but just doing some moving around, you know, starting with just skating, standing drills, easy T push. How does that feel? Okay, a little more aggressive T push, some shuffles. Then going into your butterfly, working on just some half butterfly slide um, or half butter, like butterfly crawl back and forth. How does that feel? Recovering out of your butterflies just gently. So coming out of your butterfly to your skates. How does that feel? And then probably the last thing I would add in is going from your skates to your butterfly or from your, you know, your skates into a butterfly slide and just, just test it out. See how it all feels before you get yourself in a game situation. You know the saying that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of, is worth a pound of cure? Is that the saying? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? You know that you get the idea. The idea is the best way to recover from your groin injury is not to get one in the first place, ideally. Good place to start is the free butterfly challenge. So it's not designed to really pr reduce gro groin strains, but it does unlock your hip mobility. And so it helps in that regard. I'll drop a link in the, co in the comments below it or in the description below. It's free, so you can give it a whirl and it takes like less than 10 minutes a day. And you'll, at the very end, you'll get a wider butterfly flare if nothing else. If you missed video one in this series, make sure you go watch that now. We'll post a link somewhere. <laughs> and here's where I beg you to please, please give me a like. <laughs> and then I say thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it so much so that I will be back next week with video three in this three-part series because you asked for what do I do when I strain my groin and I couldn't do it all in one video. It would be a very long video, so I broke it up into three videos. Next week is the video of how to not strain your groin in the first place. I will see you then.